boa noite. O meu nome é Carla Antunes e deixo-me já dizer que hoje o programa vai ser dedicado à boa disposição e bom humor. Para já vou-lhe introduzir os convidados que vamos ter aqui hoje neste palco maravilhoso. Temos Joe Botelho, Jeff Estrela e Mike Rita. Você está preparado para se rir? Se não está, prepare-se, porque com você tenho a Santa Comédia. Hi, my name is Joe Botelho. I'm a very serious Portuguese man. I've never smiled in 30 years. The last time I smiled is when Cristiano Ronaldo scored a goal. And we won the Euro Cup. That's the last time I smiled. And then I stopped right after. So I'm a very serious man. <laughs> yeah, you have, a, you have a private comedy show. <laughs> Hi. Hi, everyone. My name is Joe Botello. I am a Portuguese comic. Uh, my parents are Portuguese. I'm also a roofer because uh, I'm not very good at comedy. That's why. That's mostly why, I think. And I love the roof. Once you put a Portuguese person on the roof, that's it. They don't want to leave, so it's hard to, to give it up. So uh, at night, I do comedy. Uh, before COVID, we used to do comedy all the time. I love comedy. I do Portuguese comedy as well. Um, you guys may have heard of me. I'm the guy that your parents don't let you play the YouTube videos at home. They're like, no, it's too much. Super young. You probably don't know what that feels like. Sir, do you know what that feels like being married for 15 years? No, you don't. But do you know what a massage with your shirt feels like? That's what 15 years of marriage feels like. I'm married. I have two beautiful kids. I'm married to a, a native woman. Uh, so my parents hate me. Uh, <laughs> no, they still, my parents love me. But I mean, like, you know, they wanted me to marry a Portuguese lady. And I was like, ah, I don't know. I mean, I, I want to talk to my wife. I know it's a weird concept to talk to your wife, but I'd like to talk to my wife about things. And I don't want to, I don't want to marry someone that reminds me of my mother. I think it's a little weird. You know, I want someone that's not like my mom because you don't want to get the, another 30 years with, the, with your mom. So the first 20 is with her. I don't know. My mom's a great lady. Um, you know what? I love her. Be Beijing's mommy. Beijing's. So five years ago, I was getting close to turning 40. And there was just some things I wanted to do before I turned 40. And I was, I think I was 38 years old. And I uh, saw an open mic, uh, which means... Uh, just so you could go and sing or do comedy or whatever you want to do. So it's an open mic at a bar. And I signed up for it, and I, I walked in, and I did uh, five minutes of stand-up comedy, very bad stand-up comedy for five minutes, and I just got hooked. I, I got addicted to it. So I love it. So I haven't stopped. I haven't missed a couple of days since I started. I love, I love comedy. This is so hard. But I'm going to get off that fence. Effective immediately, I'm canceling all my live shows. I'm not taking any more bookings. Comedy is done for 2020. I know this is hard. I know you're devastated. We're all devastated. My family's devastated. Joe has gone home. But this is the best thing we can do. It's the right thing to do. Justin would agree. I just don't know. I don't want to shame you, other comedians that are continuing doing shows. But I'm just going to let you know I'm watching and taking notes. Smarten up! Also, I will not take any half measures. I'm not postponing anything. I'm also not doing any online shows in case this virus mutates and literally goes viral. I'm done, 2020. I'll see you in 2021. Yeah, it's. I miss it, though. I mean, all of us do. If you do stand-up, it's a different... Like this is like just holding this microphone is just an energy and it's so, I hate saying the word energy, but it just feels so amazing when people laugh at you. So, and to have that, I just miss it. I love making people laugh. It's my favorite thing. So I like knowing I'm the one that's making you laugh too. So it's, it's, it's a great feeling. I'm, I do a lot of uh, like riffing or improv, like I, I, a lot of uh, crowd work, crowd work. I talk to the audience. So I'll go up there and I just start talking to a couple. Like I'll say, hey, how's it going, beautiful lady? What's your name? And you say, Carla. I go, are you married? Uh, you know, and then we start talking. Usually I'm hitting on beautiful women. That's what I mostly do. And then couples. But yeah, I love crowd work. I love, because... That's why I love about comedy the most, for me personally, is interacting with people and, and getting funny out of them and, and you know, really learning about them. That's why I love it. It just, it's, it just feels so good to make people laugh and talk about their lives. I just love it. And then I talk about my family. I have two kids, like I said, and a wife and, and my parents and stuff like that. So I just talk, like I try to come up with my own material. But yeah, you, material, but I do very heavy crowd work, lots of crowd work. <laughs> Taking a, how, how was it taking a 30-year-old's virginity? 
Was it, was it hard? It was. You're like, oh my god, you felt like a teacher, right? You're like, are you a teacher? Oh my god! Like the things that make me laugh that I get inspired and in, they're not stand up is the Three Stooges. I just think the Three Stooges are hilarious. Bugs Bunny, it's, again, not stand-up, but he's, Bugs Bunny is so funny. Like from 40 years ago and the and the Three Stooges, you can't help but laugh. So I, I just like, so that's what I just like being around funny and watching funny. But um, Patrice O'Neill, George Carlin, Richard Pryor, these guys are all hilarious. I love those guys. I mean, I, I mean, it'd be a dream to even get halfway close to how good they are. So yeah, these guys are amazing. They're amazing comics. But no, I have kids and they're like, I will take my kids to the toy store and they're already too old for it. I don't care because I want to get my own toys. Because it looks weird when you're by yourself at the toy store and you look like Santa Claus and there's no kids around you. So I like taking my kids with me. But no, I love cartoons. Yeah. I lo I lo How do I define comedy? Hmm. That's a good question. Whatever makes me laugh. So, so if, I make, if I'm in a room of 30 people, this happens all the time, and three people laugh... That's comedy for me. <laughs> it's comedy in so many different levels. It's comedy because 27 people didn't laugh, and that, that's funny for people in the back of the room, the other comedians laughing at me. And then it's funny to me because I just, I made three, I connected with three people, and that's all I care about. It's like, I don't want to force you to like my comedy. If it's funny to me, I'm going to say it, and that's how, so whatever I find funny is comedy. I mean, there's clean comics that just like don't say swear words and they don't talk about sex or anything that's that can be uh, offensive. So there's non-offensive comedy that I, I personally don't find funny. Um, I mean, to me, the most I mean, I think Bugs Bunny is offensive. Like that's, that's hilarious. That's why I like Bugs Bunny. <laughs> I look sharp. I trimmed my beard for you. I had nose hairs coming out here, and I was like, no, not for Carla. I'm gonna take all the nose hairs out. Then my wife got upset. She's like, are you? going to see a girl? And I was like, why would you ask that? She's like, you took a shower and you shaved your nose hairs. And I was like, no, it's a guy named Carl and Alberto. That's who I'm gonna go see. <laughs> I do Portuguese shows and I do work with other Portuguese like Mike and stuff. But uh, day to day, we it's usually a couple of people on the show. And so you, you do your, you don't do it on stage, you're by yourself, you're always alone, which is another thing I love. Because fail or succeed alone is the best. Because then the, it just feels great. I'm sorry. I could go. T I could talk about how good I feel, but it feels amazing being up there. But it's also scary. But yeah. So you work with other comics, like off stage. You you know share jokes and not share, but you share like you know uh, work on jokes, workshop them, uh, try and like you know what's fun. Is this funny? And you start talking about what's funny and stuff. And then you go to car and like the road trips to the shows. You get together, a bunch of you uh, comics get in a car and you drive over. I love that. All it's fun. But on stage, it's always just you by yourself. Um, just this, the things about being like uh, like Italians, which I'm like, we're so much better. You know, I like Italian. Listen, Italians, I love you, but we're better. Okay, we're better at concrete. We're better at roofing. All right, and we're better at soccer. Just deal with it. Relax. Okay. All right. And I open my shirt up. I have no buttons up. I show my chest hair. I don't need to be like you guys. I love Italians. Ciao, Bella. Now it's, that's three languages. I can't stop. Ooh, what's a so funny? I got slapped in the face once during a show by a Portuguese woman. Yeah, because I was I was I was I was saying something about Portuguese uh, about Portuguese. I forget what it was. It was a joke. I was because I love our people, but it's like she came up and slapped me across the face, and I was like, "It's a joke. I'm Portuguese." And then she like got off the stage. 
I mean, I mean, is that it was funny to everyone watching? And again, I'm really I'm strong, so it didn't hurt that much. But it was hilarious. I couldn't believe someone. And I've t joked around with like big men and called them little. I made fun of people on stage. I like we call roasting. So I've like roasted people that I've roasted groups like ten people. You know, and they're like, still don't come after me. They understand it's a joke. I'm pretty good at letting people know it's just, I'm joking, that we're having fun. But this lady with her fiery Portuguese anger just got up and walked and get pow, right across my face. I said something that, it was about my mother. That's what it was. She goes, Ti falas about ti mine? Natasha Vagonia? Like, I'm like, I am, what? I'm like, it's a joke. I'm not a shit. Like, what's wrong? Juiz no cabeza. Pow! And like, I almost lost a tooth. I'm like, but it was, I, I liked it. Yeah, she was, I was, I did this waiting for her to finish. I was like, if you're going to start the face, finish where the good place is. But no, she didn't, I think she would hurt her hand. So, but no, I, her husband came up and, and was like, oh, I'm so sorry. She got so mad. So who does nothing but eat? Uh, this is very offensive because you're talking about me. This is what you're talking about. No, you didn't write this as I walked in. Who does nothing but eat? Me. I'll do anything to make people laugh. Like when I didn't have enough jokes to tell in the time, I would just take off my shirt. This is how, this is what you do to try and make people laugh. It's, uh, it's just funny because I'm fat. But if I, if, I looked like, if I looked like you behind the camera, Mr. Beautiful Italian Peter Parker, it would, people wouldn't laugh. They would just faint because how handsome you are. You're so handsome. You know what I mean? <laughs> Please make me look beautiful. <laughs> what is the first thing you do when you wake up? I go pee. Is that not what normal? No? What is the first thing you do when you wake up? Wake up. That's it. That's the answer? <laughs> oh, you open your eyes. Okay. Yeah. I, I, go, I walk to the bathroom with my eyes closed. Because it's all instinct at this point. I just like, I jump over the cat and I go right to the... <laughs> Sorry. Okay. It's like an action thing. So like my quack, like quack, sometimes when you eat too much, too much sausage, you, you go caca in your quackish. And then your mom gets mad at you and she hits you <laughs> with a, a, a spoon, a wooden spoon. And then you get, you get sick and you, you don't go, you don't go to school because you're like, oh, I just got hit with a spoon. And so you, they're like, sick, don't you need a pika? I'm like, no, I'm fine. I'm va vaccinated. I'm okay. Is that better? No. Sometimes when sometimes I go outside of the house because I ran out of sausage and I forgot to put pants on and I'm just wearing quackish. Can you imagine that? I'm just walking down with quack down Dufferin Street with just quackish on. And I'm holding a wooden spoon as a microphone, just yelling at people. They go, This guy's crazy. I'm like, what happened? Like he got a pika for the COVID vaccine and he went a little bit cuckoo. That's what happened. I don't know. This is this is what we, this is what we do. I like this. This is this is how you write. This is an exercise, a writing exercise. I like this. Yeah, it's. I mean, that's usually what you do. You like think of something, or someone throws words. It helps you to create. So, the reason I say whatever I want on stage is because I have a job that I can fall onto. <laughs> <laughs> that I can talk about sex for half an hour and then I can, it's fine. But you talk about the things you don't have. That's what I find. I talk about sex and money and good looks all the time because I don't have any of those things. So, but um, yes, I wish I had. I talk about, I wish I had some big sausage in my quackish. That's what I talk about a lot. <laughs> And I go, and then and then my wife finds out I talk about sausage all the time on stage, and then she hits me with a wooden spoon. Like that's what happens usually. <laughs> Beer review. Super bulk. Is that actually how you pronounce it? Super bulk. Super bulk. I've never had it. I'm Portuguese. I've never had it. And a lot of people think I'm Portuguese. You look pretty Portuguese. Even though you never touched a hammer. What? Let's... I've touched a hammer. Oh, never bring a proper one. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. This is an old trick I learned on my first day of roofing. Like a Jedi Knight. No, better than that. A Templar Knight. Because my parents are Portuguese, you're allowed to actually go and do some work there. I'm allowed to perform and, and try and do stand-up in Portugal. So that was my plan for this year. Because I went on tour. <clears throat> I went on tour 2018 
or no, 2019, I went on tour to the East Coast, uh, Newfoundland, Nova Scotia. I did like a two-week tour. It was awesome. So my plan was just to keep doing that so and make money off of that. So And then finally stop waking up at 6 in the morning and going to work and the roof. You know, because there's some nights you come home from from comedy, it's five in the morning, and then I have to get up and go to to work. But yeah, so I mean, yeah, I've never been. I mean, I, everywhere they they keep showing me pictures growing up, like look how beautiful where we're from, look how beautiful it is, and they're like, you're never going. It's like, why are you showing me all these pictures of Portugal, and you never take me? You know what's the worst? They took my sister. This better be on. Listen, you took Teresa over me. I'm the oldest. Why would you take the oldest? Leave the girl at home. She has stuff to do. Why would you take the oldest? <laughs> it just yeah, I've never I would I would love to go. It would be it'd be awesome, but just I'm just so natural, right? Am I not natural in the in this oh there was a one here and everyone saw that one turn. Yeah, I didn't even look to it. I know I how's it going for it's like right here on my quackish. It's like just filming my quackish. It is filming my quackish. You're lying to me. Okay. Follow me on uh, on Instagram at, at the Angry Skeptic or look for Joe Batello and it's a picture of me. It's a picture of me like I'm like I'm like I'm like this. But I have no hat, no chapa, no glasses. But yeah, follow me there and there's links to all my stuff. I have a couple of uh, podcasts I do with my friends and I have a, a beer review where I drink Cerveja and I review it. It's it's the best show ever. I do it for free. I pay them to do the show and I drink beer. But yeah, check it out. Check me out at the Angry Skeptic on Instagram and everything else. Thank you very much. <laughs>